Hello YouTube, Marin Law here, back with another video. It's not the video I wanted to make due to the fact it's been raining continuously, but here we go. This is a Wang professional computer. So, so they attempt at making a partially IBM compatible computer in the sense of it does run MS-DOS, but nothing inside it is IBM compatible, which I will show you. The graphics card will be the major example of this. It is definitely not IBM compatible in any way. And when people say the IBM's MDA board is big, wait until you see this thing. Well, let's open it up and have a little bit of a look inside. I will show you some parts and I'll show you the graphics card. Now you remember what I was saying about the graphics card? Well, check this out. That is the graphics card. To put it in perspective, that's my hand. <laughs> it is double the size of my hand in length and in height. That is one huge graphics card and all it does is a uh, monochrome. And there's no color, nothing. And anyway, next we have a networking card, which also says it's got this plat tab, boom, slots out, and there we go, we have a networking card. Now, this is the motherboard, or at least what you can see of it. So, let's see what we can see. First off, there's the heart. There's an 8086 AMD branded microprocessor, and its date is 19... 1982 apparently. Okay, doesn't have a Mathco Pro and 8087, but meh, you can get one of those. It's got four expansion ports. Power goes directly from the power supply directly into it. As you can see right here, that's the power supply cables. You don't want to touch those cables. Very scary. It's got four inputs for boards. Um, so two of them are already filled. One is filled by graphics. The other one is filled by a networking card. Um, I haven't been able to find any other cards for it. I know there's a hard drive card for it. So we'll have to try and find that. Now if we move across. Oh, there's the floppy drive. It's sitting right over here. I've taken off this shield a bit, unfortunately, to clean the heads up to the back on yet. But if you do notice, it actually has got space for a secondary drive down below. Which is, if you look at it, a little picture of a hard drive. Can you see it? Unfortunately you need a hard drive controller. <laughs> Very good. I have a hard drive that will fit this but I don't have a hard drive controller so no hard drive for me. It does run MS-DOS. Uh, version 2 I believe this one runs. Uh, I wouldn't exactly call this a microcomputer. And if you look at its sheer size, I'll back up a bit here. Look at the sheer size of this thing. I mean, here, I'll grab another computer. This is an Amiga 1200. It just, you could put a couple Amigas inside this Wang. That's how big this thing is. <laughs> so I, I more put it on the borderline of being a mini computer. Uh, the mini computer I've got's quite a bit bigger than this though. But yeah, you got I.O. on the back. Basically, you've got a Centronics printer port. We'll have a little look at that. So let's have a look at my I.O. So we have a printer interface up here. And this is a proprietary interface. Actually, pretty much everything on this thing is proprietary. For instance, power and signal for a monitor. Unless you have a Wang monitor, not going to happen. Same with the keyboard, which is a real problem when I got this because the keyboard didn't work. This keyboard is a Keytronic, which uh, I will actually show you that very soon. There we've got a networking input up. That's actually pretty much the only standard thing on it and the power cable. They're the only standard things on this thing. <laughs> anyway, I put the uh, video card back in, as you can see. Believe it or not, that she does need this cooling, these cooling vents up here because this thing does get pretty damn hot. Anyway, I'll show you what's wrong with the keyboard. So this is the keyboard, and at first glance, you think everything's fine. 
but pushing on the keys nothing happened. It's because it's a Keytronic keyboard and it uses these. And unfortunately, they've all <laughs> kind of fallen apart. So what it basically is, is a contact on each end of one of these. I like an aluminum foil pad and it makes contact with the keys. So it basically uh, conducts. Uh, over time they deteriorate and that's basically what's happened. And the only way to really repair it is to put new uh, contacts on it. Which being a 88 key keyboard is going to be long and tedious. That's something I will probably get around to doing in the future. So this is the menu that it boots into. So this is the VS login screen. Basically it can work as a terminal or it can work as a on its own computer. Basically the VS login is to go to the VS mini computer. After this, go into DOS. So now it's booting into MS DOS version 2. There we go. And your normal commands will work. There's a directory. No problem. Basically anything it could do in MS-DOS it can do. Uh, I can run a few IBM compatible programs on it, but some of them just don't run very well. <laughs> For obvious reasons. But yeah, um, anything that you uh, want to put in this computer has to be a WANG card. It, there's nothing third party from what I've seen so far for this computer. It's very limited on what it can do because of that, even though it has a strong 8086 processor. Yeah, limitations. <laughs> All down to the, uh, the slots. It's not ISA, so it becomes a really big problem. But hey, this is it. And uh, I will make more videos of this machine in the future when I get some games to run on it, because I think that would be really cool. Hopefully you guys too. Anyway, um, thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully I can do the video I actually wanted to do in the next few days. See you all later.